Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. Now, I'm often told, on the Twitters in particular, that hydrogen is the future. Well, I'm currently leaning on a bit of the future. This is the Hyundai iX35 hydrogen fuel cell car. It's currently full of hydrogen, and I'm going to take it for a little bit of a test drive. The Hyundai iX35 fuel cell car looks like many other small SUVs. On the outside, other than the fuel cap, it all looks very familiar. Likewise, the interior. There's very little to tell you this car is powered by what could be revolutionary technology. Although there is one clue, because up on the roof lining is a hydrogen sensor. Driving the car is very simple. Even an idiot could do it. I don't think I'm actually driving. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> D. There we go, that, that would help. As I was told before I got in it, you, it won't be a surprise to you at all because it drives just like an electric car. Well, the thing is, whoa, it is an electric car. I don't know what I was expecting. I think I was expecting a bit of or something, but the fuel cell in this car, unlike the Honda Clarity, which if you scroll back through previous fully charged episodes, I did drive the Honda Clarity a few years ago, and that had a fuel cell here and you really could hear it, everyone. Going on to the autobahn, foot down, windscreen wipers on, unintentionally, <laughs> trying to find the right switch. Whereas this is just like I'm in a battery electric car. So there's an electric motor at the front driving the front wheels. Above that is a fuel cell stack. On one side, the hydrogen comes in. On the other side, the oxygen comes in. Those are mixed in the fuel cell stack. That produces the electricity. <laughs> I'm hoping that whatever that was that dropped, it's nothing to do with the car. It's not uh, an experimental vehicle, it's not a test vehicle. This is a manufactured vehicle. They've made about a thousand of them so far. They are, they've just reduced from a six figure sum. And that took me a moment to work out what that means. That means unbelievably expensive to a mid range five figure sum. Quite an expensive car still. And at the moment, not very many places to refuel it. But if you cast your mind back, and I can certainly do this very easily, seven or eight years, uh, you know, when I first had an electric car, there was one rapid charger in the country, one. There was nowhere to, to charge your car. You couldn't drive an electric car for miles on a motorway. All the Clarksonian myths about electric cars were absolutely true then. Uh, limited range, nowhere to charge them, no infrastructure. Well, you could say exactly the same about hydrogen cars now. Uh, you know, not limited range, but it's still limited if you can't buy any hydrogen. <laughs> Definitely limited. I want to be able to get in a car and drive to Scotland. Well, you couldn't do that in this yet. But, five years time, you probably will be able to. The arguments about hydrogen are so complicated. Because at the moment, these cars are undoubtedly very expensive. The concept of a hydrogen fuel cell is still new technology that's still being developed it's improving all the time but it's still fairly rarefied and it's expensive so the big question is where does the hydrogen come from now presently 95% of commercially available hydrogen in the UK is produced by the fossil fuel industry it is a, a byproduct of the oil refining process it can be extracted from natural gas it's part of the refining process that's where we get hydrogen from the actual hydrogen we get from it is beautifully clean. It doesn't have any, uh, any other elements in it. When you use it in a fuel cell, all that comes out is water, which is possibly, and I'm going to get a little bit uh, political now, possibly why the, the fossil fuel industry is so incredibly enthusiastic about hydrogen. But, and here's a very important but, you can get hydrogen from splitting water. But there is a downside to producing hydrogen from splitting water, and that downside is an enormous energy waste. I've heard different arguments, it's either four to one or three to one. So you put either four times more electricity in than you get the equivalent energy of hydrogen out, or you put three times. Whatever it is, it's very wasteful. But one of the things we have an enormous problem with in this country already, and that's only gonna grow, is excess wind energy. And the reason you see a wind turbine not turning is because the national grid have turned it off because it's producing too much electricity at the wrong time. And so what you could use that electricity for, essentially wasted electricity, at the moment we don't produce it and we could produce it, we produce it, we use that electricity very wastefully, you could say, to, to, uh, to split water and to produce hydrogen. 
and the cost of that is absolutely infinitesimally small because that electricity wasn't going to be used otherwise and strangely enough once a wind turbine's up it doesn't cost anything to fuel it so one of the things a lot of people don't know about hydrogen fuel cell cars and i've only driven two but they both have this is they both have quite a substantial battery pack in them lithium-ion batteries just like a battery electric car uh, and in fact this one even has a, a regen setting i'll put it on now so i'm now regening and it's charging and it says charge it's charging up the batteries quite well as i'm slowing down when you put your foot down the electronics in the car tell the fuel cell to start producing electricity but it takes a moment for it to build that power up so the battery kicks in straight away battery power is instantaneous you don't have to plug it in it's not a plug-in hybrid fuel cell car that would just be too complicated I then went for a short drive to find out more and refill the hydrogen tank with Robin Hales from Hyundai. Because people think, mm. hydrogen, that was the Hindenburg Gap, blew up, that killed loads of people. But we're talking slightly, a yeah, slight advance in technology from a canvas-covered balloon, I think it's fair yeah, to say. Yeah, if you look at, certainly, uh, the, the, the main focus of attention is around the tank and the safety of the tank. Uh, I mean, without boring you with great details of the certification process the tank has to go through, you will not crush one of these tanks right. in the event of a normal accident. Um, the safety procedures that they have to go through are extreme. Um, right. and certainly, I have absolutely no problems at all getting one of these cars and driving it all day long. Yeah. Uh, I think in, in comparison, when you look at conventional vehicles and the level of safety and technology built into these tanks compared to something like conventional petrol or diesel, then you could always raise a question mark over the safety of a, of a conventional car. But it's trying to weigh that off against the kind of convenience that this technology gives you, and even petrol and diesel vehicles as well, you become accepting of the dangers yeah. because you appreciate the benefits that this type of technology yeah. brings along. And hydrogen is no different. I mean, it's, it's it'd be wrong to say that hydrogen is a safe fuel, um, but in the same sense, it's no more dangerous than petrol or diesel. It's just a different set of yeah. dangers. And once yeah. you appreciate that, then. I personally don't think there's any safety issues at all. This yeah. vehicle's fully type approved um, for sale anywhere in the world. It's gone through the same crash tests as, as any conventional vehicle, combined with all the safety tests that the tank on its own has to go through, just numerous hydrogen leak detection sensors all around the car. Right. Um, so as I say, from a, from a safety point of view, in my mind, there's, there's nothing to worry about. Fuel cell development over the past few years, there's been a, a, a lot of work done on removing as much as we can of the platinum um, out of the, of the system. You look at a conventional vehicle, there's about five grams of platinum in the catalytic converter. Right. Current fuel cells in vehicles at the moment, you're looking between 30 and 40, depending on which vehicle it is. So there's obviously quite a lot. Yeah, but I mean, that's quite intriguing. You know, catalytic converter is very common. Mm. I mean, there must be millions of yeah, them in yeah. the world. And Again, it, it, and coming back to the areas of, of fuel cell cost reduction, we're, we're already looking at sub substituting some of the platinum um, in the fuel cell with other metals that give right. you the same reaction. Right. And then combined with the amount of work and developments that have gone into platinum recycling, yes. the cost of it is constantly coming down and down and down and right. down. We arrived at the hydrogen refueling centre next to Heathrow Airport and went through the refueling procedure, which is very similar to refilling a conventional car. Open the filler cap, lift the charging nozzle, click into place, press the button and... I can definitely hear that. Oh. So that's 700 bar, that's how much pressure is going through this hose. That is 10,000 PSI. That is quite staggering. Hydrogen will be sold in kilograms, not litres or gallons. So now we'll have another metric to learn, not miles to the gallon or kilometres per litre, but kilometres per kilo. Handle drop. Oh. Nothing coming out, it's all right. <laughs> oh, now I've got to bend the... Oh, because now that actually the pipe is yeah, more cold. rigid because yeah. it's cold. You can see ah. some of the frost build up as well on that. With gas under this much pressure, the effect is incredibly chilling. There was clearly visible frosting on the filler nozzle. So who knows if this technology will catch on? Hyundai and Toyota certainly think it will. They're investing billions. There's no question that this sort of vehicle is a massive improvement on any diesel or petrol car. So I say hats off to Hyundai for giving it a go. While we were at Hyundai, we were also shown this lovely bit of tech. It was in a lovely box. 
It's a grey thing with a button and a USB port. It's a hydrogen fuel cell phone charger. It can charge loads of phones from one hydrogen cartridge. It costs 149 quid and the cartridges cost £5.95 for a refill. For more information, go to beup.com.